you guys got me? So I suppose, um, let me just open this up so I can see the chat at the same time. Alrighty, and then we can turn that on. We'll take that off. Or you know what, instead, let's just turn the webcam on instead. Oh, that doesn't look good. I'll turn that off. Yeah, that's a bit better, so it is. Yeah, well, I have to, because, so Megan's away up to the thingy. She's away. So Megan's mum's staying in um, a hospice at the minute, so she is. She's going out well, but she's getting a lot better. They're trying to sort out her medication, so it's just me. <coughs> Megan's staying up, and got Ozzy here, so um, if I have to go night throughout this <laughs> live stream, you know, look, <laughs> it is what it is, you know what I mean? Um, okay, okay. So I'll try and explain why I enjoy Morkborg. Um, I know a lot of people dislike it, but, and the thing is, the people that created are also pretty much trash, but <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. So why would I enjoy it? This is the thing. This is, this is the thing. Why would I enjoy something from these people? Now, I really do try to buy into it. When it comes to, like, indie stuff, I'm, I'm a lot more forgiven. Whereas when it comes to someone like, somewhere like Paizo or Wizards, I'm very unforgiven. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we're in the haunted house, we are, guys. <laughs> we're in the haunted house. So, look, why do I like more work? Now, one of the things I think is that why I... <laughs> One of the things for yeah yeah I got actually the cyborg here I haven't been able to play it yet though, um so I haven't haven't played it so but the thing is I'm that busy test playing the other stuff I haven't really um haven't played well I played more more for about two weeks ago so I did that's the last time yeah yeah I've read through it so I have but anyway um best wishes ah oh, thanks mom thanks um so like. one of the things I think a lot of people forget when it comes to more for is you really need to read the books because they're a bit more like see even the feel the experience you know what actually forget all that stuff <clears throat> i'll just go right into it why i would choose this over something like dungeon crawl classic or um old school essentials and the big thing is see how easy it is to get people to convince people that haven't heard about this to actually play it it's so easy it may as well be a one page rpg although that's not true anymore because they've added so many more rules anyone that's telling you it's bare bones at the minute i would say it depends on what you want to do also because it is bare bones it's also got me more and more into game design which has again turned into um the gas station it's made me actually want to produce more books the thing is um for the most part when it comes to 5e i'm not a dm for 5e games you know what i mean so when it comes to actually producing stuff that's why i do subclasses because I, i'm a player so i am in that in those regards so that's why i personally enjoy it and uh, posting like no it actually like that's not me i don't know who it is that keeps posting the, there is there's an odd thread there was oh there was, I'll, I'll need to get that up um the, uh, one of the creators um was like oh there's a so there's a copy past about more words so there is and uh <laughs> look i thought i thought it was really funny but it must be the creators have never seen it before you know but look so what do i like about this it's so easy to convince people to play it and um, i've had no issue everyone anyone that has played role-playing games and i've also played with quite a few people that have never played role-playing games before i've been able to pick this game up and play it the system is very rules light however which a lot of people don't like to um Oh, wait, here, is my, let me see. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just checking. Sorry, the stream looked like it was off, so it was um, on my screen. I was like, hold on a second, can you guys not see the screen? Um, it's very easy to pick up and play. It's very easy to DM. I personally enjoy it. Like, I know for a lot of people, they're going to be turned off by the artwork, and I think that's more of a personal preference. You can get the, co the goals without... Um, without um all the stupid over the top artwork and that's pretty sweet you know what i mean so like if you don't like that you can still get that um so what is it that i like about it it's it's easy it's really easy to pick up and play and honestly the for the lack of mechanics that it has the mechanics that it does have work and they work really well like honestly i'm never going to go back to ac 
on it, like in any game. For me, I am um, this was for well, no, actually, that's telling a lie. The first game I played where armor acted as more as like a damage sponge was Fant- uh, Star Wars Fantasy Flight games, uh, Edge of the Empire. And see, by playing this, honestly, I'm never going back to AC. AC's a silly mechanic, I really don't like it. I don't like the idea that you just can't get hit. You know what I mean? It shouldn't, it should be, you're still getting hit. It's just the armor absorbs. You know what I mean? Um, and again, this is more of a taste sort of thing. Some people are going to prefer more complex games. That's up to you. I kind of like just, like, honestly, I drink an awful lot whenever I'm playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just one of those types. So, like, let's open it up. And, oh, this, I think we'll come back to this later. So, what does it say here? A doom metal album of a game, a spiked thrill to the face, rolls light heavy everything else now that's kind of a lie <laughs> i'm just gonna go right there that that's a fucking lie however <clears throat> however there's some stuff in it that that's very true i am um, i do think this suffers from fake edge but because it goes in i think it's because for me for me getting into tabletop games was all 40k and it was third edition 40k and for all you guys that know third edition 40k you know, it was kind of wacky. It was over the top. It was it was very grim and dark to the point of the extreme, and to that point, it went into parody, and that's where I think Morkborg is. But the thing is, the creators try to make it serious, whereas every game that I play with people that I would play with, it's it's a silly setting. You know what I mean? It's a very silly setting, and we just kind of have fun with it instead. We don't really try to be like, oh, this is very edgy. Ooh, yes, I'm very, ooh, I'm very serious. <laughs> Which I think the creators tried to go for with that quote on it, but that's just not the case. Um, I think it's a silly setting and it's fun, um, and I kind of like that. Also, it's got some like one of the things that it does have is so <clears throat> it's got an end of the world. It's built into it, so it is the end of the world. Um, Porgs, no, getting better. Where is it? Let me just get it up here. Um, I'll show you some of the. There we go. The calendar. So this here is it's built in end of the world. So it is, and again they try to be very serious about it, but if you just can't be, you know what I mean. Also, this does take a bit of a while to get the hang of. Um, <laughs> it just does. It's one of those ones. I think some of the pages are kind of ridiculous when it comes to it. Um, how hard it can be to pick up and play, like you know, whenever you're actually like looking for information, but because. And honestly, it's got this page here, which is honestly all the rules you need to play. Um, as I say, one page RPG. There's a few pages for like actually building characters and whatnot, but this is honestly all you need to actually play the game. And again, because this is all there is, I've actually spent a lot of time expanding, trying to try new things, you know, and it's really got me more and more interested in the game design as a whole, you know. Uh, GMing is only as hard as you make it. That's very true. That's the thing. That's the thing. I think this is honestly a good one. See, for uh, someone that's never DM'd before, I think this is definitely a good one to look into. And again, I would really recommend actually getting the book. It's, it is it is a bit of a leading experience, you know? And I think <clears throat> this is one of the things I get with a lot of grognards. A lot of grognards seem to be against the idea of making a look, book look nice. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, I'll try and turn it up. There we go, that's the microphone up full deck, so it is. Um, but I can't really talk any louder. <coughs> because, as I say, Aussie's sleeping, so he is. So, you know. <coughs> well, that's a problem with a lot of grog nerds. They don't like... Uh, and But again, this is kind of taken to the extreme. But uh, again, it's art punk. And art punk, I think, is pure taste when it comes down to it. I quite enjoy it a lot of the time. I don't mind having to, like, arch about, kind of. Especially if it's a little light. But see, if it was, like, art punk for, like, a really heavy, crunchy system, I'd be like, fuck this, threw this in the bin. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, look, let's just go through the book and uh, what I like, what I dislike. So some of the occult treasures, they're pretty, again, all of it's kind of silly, but they like to take, take themselves like very seriously. Like the way it's written. <coughs> Sorry, let me take a wee drink. <coughs> the tables are fun. Honestly, that's one of the things I think Workbird does very well is it's silly tables. And, uh, but there is, oh, there's one other, well, I don't want to talk about it because that would be a video for a different time. But anyway, so, Corpse Plundering, um, let's just go through it. Now, these, this is like a bit of a setting, if it were. Um, the world that you're in. 
goes over it pretty quickly. You know, I'm not going to bother getting into it because, again, you can just check this out for free online, you know. <clears throat> uh, no, it's not, but it's kind of... See, this thing is, again, the creators try to be very serious with the setting. They try... They, they really do think it is. But, again, I think that's just Swedes being cringe. You know what I mean? It, I think that's honestly really what it comes down to is, let's be serious, most Scandinavians are kind of cringe a lot of the time, and they do like to try to treat themselves as being very serious, even though they've got them silly accents. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I like them. You know what I mean? But I I, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, my, my dry sense that I quite enjoy about it. Um, feats is a selling point. Well, this one does have feats, but it only came in in the later game. So anyway, um, that's all the setting. Now, the end of the world is built in, so it is. So at the end of every day, uh, when will all this be gone? So years, roll d100, uh, break half year, roll d20, d10, d6, and d2. Uh, eventually the world will end, you know? And uh, then this is just going through card creation. There's, uh, the, the only thing that I do, don't like is I think they spend a lot of time... Here, that's a perfect example. So there's a D10 table over the next couple of pages. So that's one, a femur. And then you've got up to... Is that a six? No, seven. So it is. Um, eight, nine, ten. You know? So you've got an entire four pages of just a D10 table. This is the type of book that it is. You know what I mean? And this is what you're kind of dealing with. And again, for a lot of people, you're just not going to be into that. But you can find all this information online without uh, silly accents. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But come on. Like, you know, sometimes there's something about the Swedes. They do like to think, again, look. <laughs> a doom metal album of a game. A spite field of the face. Rules light. Heavy everything else. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't buy that. I do think, like, they are trying to go for the hyper edge. But... It kind of, it goes into the silly territory, and that's where I kind of embrace it with its silliness. You know what I mean? That's that's where I go with it anyway. Um, so anyway, um, equipment, abilities, again, that's just the basic. And um, this is where a lot of people get upset. Um, I think a lot of people do, because again, this, is, this was kind of like flavor of the month about three years ago, and it's kind of hung about, so it has. That's the thing, and I, I think a lot of people get upset because it's technically it's OSR, it's based off like older editions of D&D, &D, and that's where it comes from, the ability score modifiers. And <clears throat> a lot of grognards like, this isn't OSR, and I'm like, I don't really know what OSR even means anymore because people are like, no, it means this, it means that. No, it's a style of play, no, it's a mindset, it's this, it's that. I don't honestly know, you know? Um, I've, I have no idea what OSR even stands for, but this is based on early D&D, &D, and that's pretty much it. That's all I can really tell you, if you know what I mean. I don't know what OSR even is, but <clears throat> it comes from that anyway. Um, yeah, mindset. Well, that's what a lot of people try to say. I don't really know. Uh, tests, I quite like this. Difficulty latent, but that's not unique to Morkborg. Um, hit points, again, no fucking... A lot of people try and make it out as if this is... Um, a lot of try people try and make it out... It depends. This this system is very lethal. I think it is more designed for one shots, which I kind of enjoy more. You know, um, I'm more of a one shot type of player. Um, I kind of just enjoy like the idea of someone coming up with like a silly because I I feel like campaigns kind of no one knows when to end a campaign. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I've I've been really enjoying like shorter campaigns, like ones that last like three to four months. Um, to, like, essentially one-shots that are, like, one to three sessions. You know what I mean? That's kind of where I would go in that. Um, very straightforward. You need to pass a D10 to hit. That's it. You put, need a D10. Or not a D10, sorry. You need to hit a, a 12 difficulty latent. Um, very straightforward. Reaction last and getting better. <clears throat> Again, this is a levelless system. So I kind of like that. I really enjoy levelless systems, honestly. I don't... I, see, this is the thing. I feel like it takes a lot of aspects that a lot of people have problems with. And it actually, like, smooths it out. I really don't like the idea of people that are like okay i'm gonna play this and i know exactly what my character is gonna play like whenever i hit level five six seven eight nine ten whenever you know what i mean and it just keeps going 
Um, but anyway, anyway, um, some schools. These are just the magic powers. Some of them are some better than others. Um, the death one. See again, you go on this. It was pretty sweet. I had that. Um, all creatures within thirty feet lose a total of four d ten hit points. That's that's an absolute nook in this game. Um, I had that for one of my characters. I loaded it and it was a lot of fun. So it was. Uh, I don't know if it's excessive, honestly. My World War One game's far more. Um, good old and Morkborg, if I be honest with you. The only thing is, that's World War One, you know? And um, when it comes to World War One, let's be serious. Uh, you know, life expectancy is like 40k tier, you know? So, it, I suppose it depends on the setting, you know? Um, that's the main god. The um, the basilisk, you know, give her offerings. Omens, they're pretty cool, actually. I really like this. This is kind of like a fancy feat system. This is where it kind of loses me, because it kind of goes a bit too much, where I don't really think this is really needed, and they spend a lot of time on these, like, tables. You know what I mean? Like, terrible traits, and broken bodies, and then this is, like, again, more, like, obsessions and shit like that. And, oh, a and a more of backstory... Um, that there is, well, that's not too bad. That's only a couple pages, but still, this isn't a big book. How many pages are in this? Does it even say? I don't think it says. I don't, most of the page number, most of the pages aren't even numbered. That's the thing, that's one of the things, though, because all, all the pages look really different, you don't even really need, page, well, no, there's page numbers here, so there's, um, but yeah, that's a lot of random tables just to get your character going. And again, I don't really think you need that, if I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I kind of would have preferred them to... You know the biggest problem that this game has? It doesn't have any form of movement or any form of, like... So, there's no, like, range in this. It, the, the range is an average size limb. So, there's no, like, 30 foot, 60 foot, 5 foot, you know... It's kind of, I, I just, so I just made up my own, well, I didn't make up my own, I mostly just borrowed from 5e, if i be honest with you guys, you know. And uh, so anyway, um, this is where I really love it. So this is one of the good things about Morkborg, and this is where I'm going to turn on the um, display. This here, there we go. Uh, I'm going to turn off that. <clears throat> So, one of the things Morkborg does really well is third-party content, and this is one of the things that I believe really a lot more companies need to embrace. Morkborg is amazing at getting third-party content creators, and that's where um, I think a lot of people, a lot of companies don't understand it's important to get third-party content creators. The more of them there are, the better. Uh, there's absolutely hundreds of classes. Like, I'm just going to skim, like, just go down that. There's way more. Like, it just keeps going. I'm only on B. Uh, and it just, the list just keeps going and going and going. There is just so many classes. It's ridiculous, you know? And this is where I think that's really what made 5 -y so popular is its third-party content. And that's where, of course, everyone knows. That's why they fucked up so badly with... Um, with the OGL, which was just an absolute shit show. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's all, like, you know, and then again, it's optional. But, 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 let's look at their uh, third-party content. Now, they try and make it, uh, make it out as if it's, uh, anyone can do it. So, this license allows anyone to make stuff from Workboard and either publish it for free or sell it without uh, taking a cut. Adventures, hacks, modules, anything goes. Just a few basic rules. One. If you adhere to these terms, you're allowed to publish for free. Essentially, um, there's some brand and stuff, but they also have a bit of a morality clause, which eh, makes me very makes me not. I, I I personally, even though I really enjoy work work and I play a lot of it, I don't see myself ever um, ever making any third party content for it just because they have. Um, thingy so that they have a morality clause and I just mm, eh, not, no, not cool you know, so eh uh, can I make more Borg NFTs? No, absolutely not, well that's okay, I, I don't mind that you know what I mean, Um, 90% of NFTs, like you know, are pretty much useless, and again, you can't like, make it out as if um this is like official you know what I mean, so you have to use just compat like use these stickers essentially and slap it on that's okay, you know what I mean? I've got no issue with that. But the morality clause, I 
do not like. That is something that would turn me off. At. So that's something I just want to point out and show you guys before, you know, going forward, which I think a lot of people do have a problem with. And, of course, they are justifiable in what is wrong. Hold on, let me just turn that screen off again to turn the blur off. Uh, which point is morality clause? Oh, let me get it up here. Let me find it. It's the it's the one it's, you can't talk about, like, you know, transgender and stuff like that. Uh, copyright legality. Not allowed to give impressions that this is official. Did they move it? Game artwork reference free. Art and text from the book may not be legally used translated. Unless you have explicitly permission. Oh, sorry, is my hand in the way? Um, branding, legal. Must be included legal. Copyright. Have they got rid of it? They might have got rid of it, actually. Hold on, let me get the screen up. Uh, display capture, is that it? No. It's... Yeah, hold on. They might have got rid of it, actually. <clears throat> have they got rid of it? If they have, this is news to me, but... Um, looks like they actually might have, or at least it's not on it anymore. Um, independent, no? That's interesting. Well, hey, you know, that's actually pretty good. You know, maybe it might have changed, but I'm not seeing it here anyway, which, hmm, I'll, 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 I'll take it for what it is, you know? Um, but again, like, you know, mm, it's hard to say. Um, I, I, I kind of fall into the, when it comes to, well, I'm working on something, but I don't want to talk about it too much because, ugh, it, it, it's not quite ready to show people just yet, so I don't really want to get too much into that. So anyway, look, let's go through the book. And again, like, you know, the classes are silly. They try to take themselves very seriously. And honestly, if you were just to buy this one book, it wouldn't be a great buy, if I'd be honest with you. Uh, Find Deserter is pretty much like an orc. You've got Scum Gutter, Rogue, <clears throat> Esoteric Hermit. Um, absolute trash, wretched loyal, that's really funny. And this is something that I really want to point out that I think may have got through them. So the court jester, Paul Trudden, or Paul Trudden. I don't know about you guys, but is that a reference to anything? Paul Trudden? P-O-L-T-R-O-O-N. Am I missing something? Uh, well, practically useless, pers uh, personally irrational, and emotional draining. Poltron's carpentry uh, thingy keeping makes enemies lose their focus. It gives you a bonus. <laughs> I don't know if that. <laughs> See, this is where I'm kind of like. Sometimes I think like, are there, are the creators doing this on purpose? Like you know, see whenever I see stuff like that, I'm like, hold hold up a minute here. I think uh, I think that something something may be going on here. You know, um, I don't know. I thought, oh, is that what it means? Um, oh, right. I thought it meant, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I was like, hold up a minute here. That's a. Uh, that's that's unusual, but again, maybe it's just because I'm not Swedish or whatever. I don't really get it. The, but the Wretched Will, that is a fun class, honestly. Um, I played one, and I LARPed as um, Jacob Rothschild. It was a lot of fun, honestly. It was one of my fu most fun characters I've played in a while. But again, I don't really think it's something I can talk about online very much. Um, the Heretical Priest, this is a fun class. I really enjoyed this one. Um, this is a pretty fun thing he's playing that. Um, Mittens is playing that in our game. Um, her, this is shit. Honestly, this is not a really shit class. Oh, and then this is the monster manual. The monster manual, I have no idea how on earth. Yeah, oh yeah, that's that's the thing. Right, let's go back. So the whole, again, this, yeah, okay, we're edgy. We're just, but we're only going to make fun out of Christians. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, if you really want to be edgy, you would, you would, you would do an awful lot more. Personally, I don't really care much for this type of stuff. Like, you know, like if they wanna, if they wanna throw it in, like, you know, come on. Like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take any of this sort of stuff seriously. And again, this, this is a field to the face. You know, I'm, I just need to keep pointing back to that. So again, like, you know, it, the whole thing is like a bag of contradictions. If I be honest with you, some aspects I absolutely love about this game, and other ones I'm kind of like, oof, oof. But the thing is. Pretty much every game that I've played and ran of Morkborg has been a lot of fun. And that's the biggest problem that I've got with it. I cannot deny 
that the game is just fun. And we'll get more into that. So we will. Anyway, that's a pretty trash one. Um, the creatures, monster manual. It's really weird. They've given them all names. So a goblin. The goblins are actually really cool. It's more like a disease in this. Brent is just a bandit. Um, some zombies. Um, it's another zombie. A lich. Um, a big troll. The troll's pretty hefty, if I'll be honest with you. Um, a porcelain doll. A gargoyle. Honestly, I don't know if you can, um, I don't even know what that is. Wick, uh, wicked Head or Wicker Head. Um, a f uh, Wyvern. Uh, and then some more undead stuff, you know. Um, honestly, if you were to just buy this book, you play, you could only really run really this adventure in the back. Now, this is an alright adventure. Um, I think it's a fine adventure. I actually quite enjoy it, so I do. Um, I've played around this a couple of times and it works. It's a nice wee easy adventure and uh, I've had actually a lot of fun with it. It's And again, this is one of the things I think Morkborg really shines. A lot of people, I personally, I normally play Lamentations adventure, adventure so I do, but if I haven't got anything prepared, I'll just go on a um, Morkborg adventure because they're bare bones, they're really easy to interchange, like you know this is all you need, like it's very minimalistic you know, and it's just very easy to pick up and go anyone could DM this without doing any prep work, which is good because I'm a lazy bollocks, if I'll be honest with you uh, you know so it, it, it works for me I think it's pretty good, it's an alright adventure they do do some better adventures they also have some worse adventures but if you were to get into Morkborg, this is this is not enough, you know? But there is a lot more stuff online. If you were to get into Morkborg, I would recommend... So the books that you really need are... You need... Where on earth are they? Oh, please tell me I haven't. Are they in the other one? Let me just check here. Oh. Why am I like this? <laughs> and that's a good adventure, actually. I'll leave that out. That's a pretty shit book, not gonna lie. It, it was actually kind of bad. Um, there we go. That's us here. So these two books. If you were to get into Morkborg, I would really recommend getting these books. Now, the thing is, as well, you can get all these for free. So you can pretty much all this. Oh, wait. Sorry. Um webcam so pretty much these three books you can get for free on their website so you can which again is what i quite like about it um so if we go back up to the top pretty much all this is free so uh let's just keep going down oh my god why is it like reference sheet free character sheet and the bare bones edition so say if you don't like all that art punk wank and um, you can just download that and that's it, you know what I mean? And it's completely free. So, you know, <laughs> there's nothing really stopping anyone from getting into work work. That's the thing. It's a really straightforward game to get into, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what I like about it. Um, Again, oh, Scumbirth, this is great. Let me just show you guys this. So, again, kill, kill, kill. This is a random character generator. It just works. It's really, and this is one of the things that a lot more companies need to get into. See? because of the whole 5e drama we see with the whole OGL more companies need to realize that accessibility is important and now you don't want to I'm a lot of games you don't want to get the 5e hards in but you definitely like you know again why do people play Dungeon Crawl Classic well there's a lot of resources online it's actually kind of easy to get into compared to a lot more of them like you know I, I would say Dungeon Crawl Classic and um, old school essentials why are they so as popular as what they are for OSR style games because they're easy to get into would that be fair to say you know um, yeah it's sadly it's just me oh no <laughs> no no just James um, but yeah like this is uh, this is the type of stuff I think a lot more companies need to get on you know making it easier for people to learn how to play and how to get into it and like you know i think they're really easy pick up and play games i've been able to run this so my local game store i'm not even joking my local game store is just 5e like that's all they play they only play 5e it's really hard to get other people to play any other system so it is but with this 
I was able to get quite a few people interested playing. And again, I did the same thing with a lot of the people that I would play with online. Normally they're kind of hesitant when it comes to other systems a lot of the time. A lot of times we're like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, we'll give it a go. And because we've done this, we've been playing a lot more other games such as like um, Dark Heresy and whatnot, you know, which I think is quite good. But again, like if you were looking to get into more board I would recommend these three books, honestly. And um, again, this is one of the things that Morkborg does really well. Pretty much all these, see all these adventures and all this supplement stuff, pretty much all of it is done by third-party creators because they were very good at getting people in, you know? Uh, just James sitting at a table staring longingly at his Morkborg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Well, you know what? I've, I've been wanting to talk about more work on why I enjoy it and I think this is the op ultimate opportunity for me to actually explain myself and my thinking behind it. Now this game is not for everyone. It's just not. I think there's a lot of people that aren't going to enjoy it. I do and you know like that's up to you. I think uh, not going to lie, never played a tabletop, just watched your videos. I mean how do you even find a group? Well that's the thing. So well, you know what? We do have the Looking for Grip server, come to think of it. Let me wrap that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the infamous neckbeard. Yeah, this computer. No! Uh, let me just put this up. So, we will... I do have a Looking for Grip server, so I do, which is over here. Um. So, you know, you can just, like, join that. It's in, like, the description, you know. Um, there's people looking for like what is this? So if we go to DM advert, there's people advertising their games. There's also players looking for groups, like you know all that type of stuff. Um, be warned, you probably will get shaded at and called cringe. You know what I mean? So that's one way to find an online group. But I would say honestly, just Google your local, like you know, just Google D and D store or something along those lines, or like I st like see if you can find anything locally. You know what I mean? And just see what comes up on Google, and then just check them out on Facebook or other social medias and see do they have a dedicated night for role playing games? You know, and that's pretty much what you go for. You know, check out the Dungeon Denison's Kickstarter. Uh, oh yeah, that's the current uh, Dungeon Crawl Classic one. It's like a monster manual, I think. I saw, I was looking at it, so I was, but like, uh, I don't know, it was kind of like, it, it, it looked a bit steep for me, for a monster manual, you know what I mean? Um, it would, like, chain them to the chair. Well, again, look, because, what? see, this is the thing, this is why I think Morkborg uh, is a good system, and this is why I think it's really easy to convince people to play because if you just sit down with them with these or you just send them like here do you want to make a character uh, you just go through them you can be like oh, okay like we've got a few characters here um does any of these take your, take your fancy and then you can just use the random character generator and you just click to your heart's content until you find something you like um again i would really recommend these books because these expand on rules and whatnot and this is really i think what makes a playable game honestly I think a lot of people, more people wouldn't have garned if this was sold as the original book. See, if this was sold as the original book, I think you would be fine. Like, you know, I don't think it wouldn't have got half as much hatred as what it does. Um, but again, like, this is just personal preference. So, like, that's kind of the most bulk I've got to talk about the system and why I enjoy it. I'm just going to go through some of the books that I've got, whether or not I think they're good or bad, you know. And honestly, the, yeah... Okay, the player, the people that created Morkborg, pretty trash. But again, it's based on first edition D and D or like early editions of D and D. So like you know, if if you're familiar with any D twenty system, you're probably going to be alright playing it. And like honestly, the creators don't even really make that much. It's mostly third party content anyway. So again, like all the see all this stack. This is like pretty much everything is third party content. I'm not even joking. So the bulk. Let's go through this book a little quickly. So this is the second one. Um, secrets. What do we have here? Cults, feats. This is all third party. Third party. Let's go through it. Third party. Third party. We've got another class here. Uh, another class. Um, this actual this adventure is really fun. So it is. I really enjoyed it. 
Um, I've played this one a couple of times and I really like it. It's really easy to run and I've had a lot of fun running it. I quite like this guy, the Looch Herder's there. He's fun, so he is. And uh, honestly, that's really what I would put on it. And um, that one's kind of shit, not gonna lie. That's okay. Um, are you cursed? This is quite good. We need to add. Oh, this is great. See this? So, this is a merchant where you have to sell a portion of your soul for magic items. Depending on where you are in the world, you'll have different items for sale. I actually kind of like this as a form of magic shop. Instead of charging money, you charge uh, ability score. Oh, sorry, ability score modifiers. And um, this is for firearms, if you want to put firearms in your game. Again, it's just one page. It doesn't... Like, see, this is the thing. How much rules can you just chuck out? How much word and how much fucking jargon do rule books need? Do they even need any? Like, you know, can you just, like, skip it all out? Can you just cut it all down? And this is what I think Morkberg has done extremely well with, is cutting the game down to its really to its foundation you know i think you can get a lot more out of it you know uh anyway anyway so this is i'm actually going to be running this adventure next so i don't really want to talk about it too much it's all right so it is uh let's just keep skipping through this real quick and uh, what's this gifts more stuff and then we've got a another adventure at the back there's more just adventures in that one this one's got more rules uh oh that's also got i really love that one see the goblin grinder that's a really fun adventure um what's in this you know you got some honestly again some more adventures some more stuff again this is all created by third party and this is endorsed by um more this was created uh, endorsed by the creators so it was this was all fan made content and um, the creators liked it that much. They decided, you know what, we're going to help you package it and put it together. And that's what I think more RPG companies really need to do. If you've got someone who's willing to spend their time and create stuff for your system, you need to endorse them as much as you can. And I think that's where Morkberg is really shown. And it's really been able to make more people... It's just made it more accessible. And that's what I like, honestly. And I think it's really... That, the, 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 there's a lot of lessons I think a lot of grognards could learn from Morkborg, you know? I think there's a lot of really basic stuff that I think a lot of people are stuck in their ways and they're not willing to think about things from a different perspective, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I was, uh, I did electronic engineering. So um, I'll go through, just wanted to say... I got Morkborg and the other two because of your recommendation. My friend is GMing for the first time doing Goblin Grinder. Have a t oh, honestly, Goblin Grinder is a great one. A really fun one. I um, Honestly, what ones would I recommend from these books? Um, I like this one, but I haven't run it yet. But I like the look of it, and I've got some ideas on how, what I'm going to do with that one. Uh, the Merchant's pretty good. I don't care much for that one. Um, the Graveyard, that's a great adventure. It's quite fun. This one's okay. Um, the Rotten Nurse. This is like uh, the Rotten... It's okay, um, if I'll be honest with you. It's not special. It's it's okay. It's got. I, I kind of like the way they made what they've done with the nurses, though. I think the monsters are pretty good. Uh, the magic system's as basic as it comes. Honestly, it's all done by magic schools. And if you feel, feel, the, uh, feel the school, you go on... Well, either you do, just do damage. But if you go a one, I'll just get up the table here. Um, and anyone, pretty much anyone can cast spells. So, on a d20, one by one, your teeth fall out, long, brittle fingernails, replace them in your gums. Uh, let, me, uh, let me open it up so you can see. Let's see, is that getting any better? Uh, one by one, your teeth fall out, long, brittle fingernails, fingernails replace them in your gums. Your smile is horrific. And you find it hard to eat. <laughs> it doesn't say for how long that lasts. For is that permanent? There was one. There was a guy in one of my games where he, I think he ran on was this table. It might have been this table. I can't remember. But he fucked up one of his spells and he had to go on the arcane catastrophes table. And it made it so any light that he looked at um, was snuffed out. So we said, you know what? It was nighttime at the time of it happening. So we're like, you know what? If you look at the sun, maybe you just blot like the sun, you know, and that's kind of type of a wacky setting that it is, because again, it's all tied to the end of the world, like the whole world is going to implode any second anyway, so it's kind of meant for just like one shots and fucking about, and uh, yeah, it is kind of per pearls of the warp, that's what I would describe it as, but again, because of that, I think it's really fun, 
uh, again, they do try to take themselves a bit too seriously. And I think that's the biggest issue. See if they had treated this as like a joke project, but we're going to be like, make it super edgy. We're going to make it super over the top. Make it like what 40k used to be. You know, 40k was always really super edgy, really super over the top. But they had a sense of humor about it. And I feel like this is a problem with Morkborg is they don't have that sense of humor half as much. So yeah, I would really recommend if you're going to actually DM Morkborg, going to probably need these three books you know that's pretty much what you're gonna have to get now i'm gonna go through my other books here that i've got and i'll tell you whether or not they're yay or nay Tre uh, treasures of the troll king it's fun it's it's decent honestly it's a good adventure but uh, it's actually a pretty solid like first adventure but like honestly um, they've got so many other free adventures that you don't really have to pay for. This is something that, like, you know, if you're interested in it, if you like the idea of, like, a big, like, the boss at the end is kind of silly. He's, like, really over the top. It's pretty much guaranteed TPK for most people because they're absolutely retarded. But, like, you know, it's not bad. It's okay. Um, this here is the original. That's Dark Tar. If you don't, if you don't know, Borg Borg actually means Dark Tar in Swedish. And um, this is what it was. Be this is what it originally came about. And um, that's a poster. I haven't played that. Um, what's this? That's just something that came in the back. I don't know. What is this? Dungeon Land. I don't know what the fuck that is. Um, more terrible tweets. That's actually an insert. That's a character sheets for Dark Tar. This book's kind of shit, not gonna lie. I don't really like this book. It's uh, it's very it's a very beautiful book. I think this is the ultimate example of whenever people say Morkborg is all style and no substance. This is this is the book that I've came across that that is 100% true. Honestly, I kind of feel bad. And the worst thing is that the guys that wrote this book are working on other projects and I've looked at them and honestly, they look really cool. But I'm just not going to pick them up because this book was just so fucking bad, if I'll be honest with you. Well, it wasn't that it was super bad. It was just... Eh. You know what I mean? I just well, I just didn't feel it. And it just... It didn't feel right. There was something about it that just didn't do it for me. In some regards, it was good. In other regards, I think there's much better stuff. So I wouldn't really recommend this to a lot of people, honestly. That one, I wouldn't recommend. I think that's Lamentation stuff here, if I'll be honest with you. That got mixed up with it. Uh, that there is, I honestly, that's really handy as well. Oh, Dark Fortress. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Eric Johannesson, the most Swedish name I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, but yeah, no, that's this is just a thingy. Uh, and again, I would really recommend this if you're playing in person because it's literally got all the roles that you need uh, to play Morkborg. It's got all the everything honestly i think it's pretty handy so it is i've used it a few times and it's done the job for me so it has um what's this bargain crypt this is actually quite good so it is and um, i think this is going to be a limited print this isn't actually going to be available for much longer i quite like this book if i be honest with you but i haven't been able to play it yet so i don't really want to speak too much but it is a limited time product so you know that's a thing um word of the chains this is actually quite good i like this one and that was actually pretty decent, so it was. Across the board, I, I kind of liked it, but I don't really want to talk too much about it, if I'll be honest with you. Um, it's got like a. Sh I would. This isn't quite a one shot. This would be more like a mini campaign, I would describe this book as. It's more like a. I think you play like maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. Okay, tops five. This would be like a five session campaign. I think this is actually a pretty solid one if you just wanted to go for the core goals and do everything online and just buy this. That's actually not bad. This book's kind of shit, not gonna lie. But again, that's I'm a bit biased when it comes to World War One stuff. Um, this isn't World War One, but it's uh, it's like a holy crusade trench. The only thing that's cool in this book, and I'll show you, which I am very happy about, is okay. It's got zeppelins, which is pretty cool. Um, there we go. It's got a tank. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I was really happy with that. You know, uh, I can't wait to give the boys a tank. Honestly, uh, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Um, but honestly, th there was some stuff in it that I think was pretty good. Oh, as my, I think my PC's just froze. Oh, there we go. It's back. Um, does no, it's all still medieval. It's still got swords and stuff, but like you know, you still can. Um, it's got some stuff in it, but honestly, I don't know if I'd be. 
maybe it's because I'm really picky when it comes to World War One, or maybe because I'm really into World War One. But I didn't really feel like this gave World War One a lot of justice. If I be honest with you, I think there was some stuff in it that was good. But I, 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 I think I would play this completely differently. If I be honest with you, I don't know if I would recommend that book. Uh, Swamp. This is actually a pretty good book. There's only one. Com okay, so one thing that I think is really cool, and I'll just show you guys. So one of the things that the guy did in this book, if I can find it, let me just find it here before I show. Oh, there we go. That's it. Oh, I closed the book. So this here page here was actually. Hold on, let me because the pile's getting that big now. Uh, I should just move these books back, shouldn't I? This is actually done by... The guy went to a swamp, so he did, or a bog marshland, and he just went ahead and he threw a little mud on a canvas, and this is how they created a map, which I thought was really cool. It was a really good idea, and I thought it worked really well. The only thing that I don't like about this book is... So it's got an adventure at the back. It's got an adventure in a swamp, but it acts like a normal dungeon crawl. What's going on here? Why would you? Why? Why would? Why, like, which is a shame because I think the rest of the book's actually quite good. But why? Like, why would you make just a normal dungeon crawl when you've got a swamp? The whole this whole um this is you could use this for much more this as a supplement for any other game as like a dark evil swamp supplement book. And it has a lot of good stuff going on. And I did back the guys working on a different book for you. But, eh. I, I, I just feel like that was a big fucking letdown for me, if I be honest with you. It says simp. It kind of does, actually. Svamp. S-V-M-P. Svamp. Um, that was, I think that was a big letdown. I think he could have done a lot better. And, you know, you could have made it, like, how do you pass through this terrain? Whereas instead, he's kind of just numbered off locations and turned it into essentially a dungeon crawl. You know, which eh, I think could have been done better, if I'd be honest with you. Eh, the, the, the actual, if I was to call this, judge it just on dungeon crawl merit, it's okay. You know, it's it's okay. I think there's some other ones that are kind of better. Um, I will show you guys one thing from this book, and it's got a really good monster manual section. So it does. So let me just get there. Um, which one is it? Let me just find it here. Um, let's see. It's, his artwork's lovely, though. He's got some really nice artwork in this book. Um... Places and maps. Hold on, let me just find it. Does this book have P thingies on it? Let me just go through it. Um, these are some classes. Um, let's see, classes. No, okay. This is monsters here, so it is. Where is the bucket head? Oh, no, that's gods. Yeah, he's got a section on gods of the swamp. I think are quite fun. This is one of the things Mortward does. They threw gods everywhere. Um, I don't know what constitutes a god anymore in the map. Like, you know, in this... Oh, here we go. There we go. We're all monsters now, so we are. Now, where is it? The bucket head. It's the bucket head that I thought was really funny. I really enjoyed him. I'm going to use him in so much shit. It's not even funny. If I could find him, that would... Oh, here we go. Here we go. This guy. Yeah, the bucket head. So, <laughs> he's like an oracle, so he is. A prophet or a madman. The ten-head oracle wears an old tin bucket on his head. Long nails pushed into his brain give him visions. So, yeah, he's got all these, like, nails poking out of him. Uh, some say prophecies. Other claim it's nothing but the gibberish of a brain-damaged madman. He walks towards you, knees down, and awaits your move. So, if you want, you can roll on it. So, you roll a D sex what does he do he attacks you he tells you a lie he bleeds to death screaming um <clears throat> he tells you a useful prophecy that's it so you have to like push one of these nails into his head essentially and uh, you get a random result i think this is actually i, I quite like this i think i'm definitely going to use this character so well i think he's quite funny and that's kind of what i like about Morkborg because again some i i think that's the thing the actual creators, the people that were like originally made Morkborg, were like dead serious and like really tried. Whereas I feel like I feel like a lot of the third party content is very silly and it's and it embraces the silliness aspect of it, you know. 
and that's what I feel like anyway. I don't. I don't feel like. I think this goes beyond like silly edge and goes into pure comedy. You know, it's almost like you could almost describe it as cold steel the hedgehog. You know, that's kind of what I like anyway. Um, but yeah, no, this air book, it's okay. Um, if you want, if you're if you really enjoy Morkborg, um, or you really want to do stuff with swamps, I would say check that out. Overall, um, there's only a couple. Oh shit! Hold on. Um, after making a hack of this, hold on. Oh. Um, there we go. That's us now. I think we're back on. Yeah, that's us. I'm on the back end. So yeah, overall, I think there's a lot of good books. Now I think I might do. I might do Cyborg a different time because the thing is, I haven't actually got a chance to play Cyborg yet, so I don't feel like I can give it a actual review without. I, I, I you need to actually play the game before I feel like I can actually talk about it. Um, I've heard mixed reviews on it. Some people really love it. Some people really hate it. Um, honestly, I don't know what to make of it from what I've read. Some it, it, it kind of suffers from again. I feel like it suffers from the exact same thing that happened with this book, and the reason for it is is it's missing a lot of stuff, and a lot of the core stuff is not as good as the third party content, and that's where Workbird really shines in its third party content, and that's what I, I I think that's really where a lot more companies need to embrace third party content. You know, as you can see, look at this one. So it's done by Bleak Games, compatible with Morkborg. And that's pretty much all you need, bar their morality clause, which they may have got rid of, apparently. So they might have got rid of that, who knows, in response to this whole outrage of the OGL, you know. So, uh, Buckethead and try to ha Well, you know, the thing is, there's a high chance of Buckethead kill you killing them, you know. Um, again, this is more of like a one-shot type of system. Do you want... I might go through the Cyborg book while I'm here. Um, but again, I can't really comment on it too much because I haven't played it. And if I haven't played it, I really don't want to speak too much on it and tell you, oh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh... Well, you know, so it's not that... I don't think Workborg is SJW because I don't think there's any real politics put in to the game itself. That's the thing. Like, you know, I don't think there's anything in this that screams, like, um, BLM, um, Me Too, Believe All Women, all that type of stuff. There's nothing in that. Uh, does Swamp have wheelchair access? No, it does not. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't think there's anything in the actual product itself that has got anything to do with SJW, like any any of that type of stuff. So that's why I'm I don't really get the outrage again. Like you know, I feel like okay. Look, let me let me grab this book here one second. Uh, oh, please tell me it's still here. Oh, no, it's inside. Uh, it's not in the drawer anymore. Never mind, never mind. It's in next door, so it is. Um, this is the thing. I don't think they actually put any of their... Well, you know what? The, the only thing I could really say would be, like, SJW is, like, yeah, the, the, there's some, like, Christian iconography that um, they, like, point at, and, like, you know, that'd be a bait out like that there. But, like, honestly, eh, I don't, like, care. Like, you know, I, I think it would be way easier if they did, like, a hybrid of, like, Islam and stuff like that. But, like, you know, <laughs> you know, you can't do that. You know what I mean? A lot of, <laughs> I don't, a lot of people are like, hey, we're, we're, we already got for Christians here, okay? We're edgy, okay? You know? um, So that's why I'm okay with it. Like, you know, honestly, I don't feel like there's anything in the books that are overly... Um, preachy like you know there's okay there might be some from some third party but like i haven't really seen any third party that i think is um i don't i haven't seen it that's all i'm gonna say i just haven't seen it personally and until i do and even then can you disconnect the the product from the people from the creator it can be very difficult to do that you know what i mean it can be very difficult but I don't really... I don't know. I don't know. I think this is perf perfectly up to you to decide. Uh, yeah, again, a lot of Vs. <laughs> they put in as many Vs as they possibly can. Uh, look, all I'm going to say is... Uh, actually, you know what? I'll go back on to the website. So while we're here, let me just turn on the screen again. 
Uh, we will go back on here. And let's just go down all their free stuff. So you can start playing Warburg pretty much tonight. So that's all you need. The Gulls Gafkinses. You can download them. You can print them out. You can do whatever. Character sheets. Um, the bare bones editions of the Gulls. Everything that you need. Um, it's got a character generator. It's got a dungeon generator. It's got a monster generator. It's got the, again, this is pretty much all stuff from the thing. It's free. That's the thing. Like, you know, um, that's a class, a free class, some more spells. Um, what's this? Deadly Dungeon Geo. I'm not sure what they are. There's another free dungeon. Um, that's their other stuff. Merch. More board cults. Again, like, this is all third party stuff. Free adventure, free adventure, free adventure free adventure i would i would say oh that's actually quite a good fun adventure as well i don't think i showed that uh the death is like well that's actually pretty good so it is and um, again free stuff all this you can just download this is what i think is pretty cool uh d100 table you don't really need it but it's nice that they've done it for free and um, what's this another 100 table some feats if you want to put feats in and um, what's this is this a class um more fashion art. i don't know um, more free stuff, more free stuff, another free class. That's what I'm gonna say. I th I think it's worth checking out. It's free, you know. So, and I've had a lot of fun playing it. The only big problem is what a lot of people don't like about it is they say that it's too bare bones, which I don't feel it's true anymore. I don't feel like that. It it is still a rules light system, and I have and I still do homebrew a lot of my own goals. But I think that's a good thing to do, honestly. I feel like opening the door to more because I feel like, especially with 5e, so much bad homebrew is out there. A lot of DMs are like, no, I only accept official content and that's that. I will not do any homebrew stuff. This system really encourages homebrew. Like, let's just go down. Like, all this third party stuff, you can just download it for free and there you go. And, like, you know, I would just show, send it to your DM. I found this class online. What do you think? And send it to them. And, you know. I think they're going to be 90% of the time they're going to be cool with it because most of the, like, some of the classes are strong, some of them are weaker. I think it's all about having fun, honestly, you know? That's that's my take on it, honestly. I, I, that's honestly the best I can say. Should you play this over other systems? That's up to you. Um, I think Dungeon Crawl Classic is a great system and it works really well and it also incorporates a lot of wacky core mechanic rules. Um, honestly, I do actually use some rules from... Um, Dungeon Crawl Classic. So you know, I it's like you know. This, see, this is the thing. I think a lot of people worry about. Oh, if I, sorry, let me just go back up to the top. Oh, if I am, um, if I enjoy this, you can't enjoy that. I don't think that's true at all. I think you can enjoy whatever the fuck you want, you know. And I'm willing. I think again, this might just be my personality. I'm. I feel like I want to. I want to be more willing. And open the doors to like people that normally I would hate and I really disagree with, but I can step aside. I can be like, you know what, that I actually really enjoyed that. You know what, that was a that was a good movie. That was great artwork. That was great whatever. You know, maybe they like like I'm a big fan of Lamstein, but Lamstein are hyper SJW. Let's be serious. Like you know, they're like, that's it is what it is. But does that make me not want to listen to Lamstein? You know. And that's the kind of, like, sometimes you just got after the past, all the culture war stuff, and kind of just enjoy the content for what it is. Uh, aesthetic is cool, but without an artist. Like, it on art. Yeah. Anyway, that's kind of pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Um, next time, I think I might talk about um, Bob Quitches who want to see everything I enjoy. Um, and then putting the said worth into your work. Anyway, anyway, so look, I'm just going to put the webcam back on, so I will. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else worth bringing up, or what I, anything that I will talk about. Um, I really like these. I honestly think it's a fun system. And see if you're, like, trying to convince people. Like, say you're stuck in a lot, right? Say you, you go to the game store, and everyone just plays 5e, and you have a really hard time finding another system to play. Uh, have you ever reviewed Varge? I want to pick that up. See, that's the thing. I only want to review books that I actually have. See, this is the thing. I think I really want to do Varge's book next because a lot of people say it's absolute dog shit. I've never actually read Varge's book. 
and I kind of want to be able to... I, I've done this with a few people. I've done... I reviewed um, Avengers Chult books, which a lot of people have. He's a Giga Trump guy. I reviewed uh, Zach Smith, who is a punk cancelled Me Too porn star, you know? Um, oh, come to think of it, actually, um, again, Zach got Me too and he has won two of the six i think so there's six court the six in total and he's won two of them so far so you know like that, that's all i would say um uh, you know no it's not in the book so it doesn't there's nothing about transphobia in the book it's about it's on the third party license so it is but they it looks like they've actually removed that so they have or at least i'm not seeing it anymore they used to have it on the third party license you know it was all about trans, and you can talk about trans or whatever. You know what I mean? Oh, here, that's it. Reminder: make it dark, depressing, weird, cruel, but let everything partake in its suffering. Be sure to avoid sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic tropes and themes in your content. There are plenty of crap in the real world already. The world of work work doesn't need it. There we go. I find it. They do still have it. Yeah, there you go. That's it there, at the bottom of their thingy. So, I've heard a lot of good things about Savage Worlds. Um, one of my friends is actually playing it at the minute. I really need to get around to playing it, you know? It's been one of those games where I really want to get into it, but I just haven't had the chance, you know? Um, but again, look, at this moment in time, um, I think Mortborg has had a more positive, um, a positive output on me, or more positive aspect on me. And it's made me more interested in game design because their goal system is so light. I've been like, I've been thinking, oh, how am I going to address this issue? How am I going to do that? Oh, how would would this be called? Oh, I'll take, you know what? I'll take goals from this system and apply it here and I can use these. And I've kind of morphed what I play into like a weird hybrid of it all, you know? So I don't know. I think it's, uh, I, I think it's, for me, it's been a positive one. Um, I get why a lot of people don't like it, and I don't blame them for it. Um, I, th I I think it's good, you know. I, I enjoy it, and I've yet to play a game where I've walked away from it and been like, that was a shit game, you know. Uh, had to add this since the gun squad is... A yeah, honestly, yeah. But again, look, it is part of their... It is in their uh, third-party license category, so... You know, that's what that's a big one that a lot of people have issue with. Oh, oh, let me show you the other one. Right, seeing as we're on the topic of this, I'm going to show you guys the other one. So, this is the book that, uh, again, a lot of people have had issue with. So, I haven't played this system yet, so I don't want to really talk about it. Um, But where is it? This might take me a wee while to find out. I think it's at the back of the... Slums, outer world, the hell, um, nano machines. That's <clears throat> this is kind of like the end of the world system, but it's done with news headlines instead of like um, quotes in the Bible. Oh, here we go. No, is that it? No, this is it. This is the goal that so many people have so much issue with, and honestly, they're more than correct in having a, an opinion like this. So. Uh, Mortborg likes to claim it, or Cyborg as well, likes to claim it. They're very free, very open. Look at us, we're the cool guys. Goal zero. Player characters cannot be loyal or have sympathy for the corpse. The cops are the cap uh, the cops or the capitalist system. They might find themselves reluctantly forced to do missions for them or their minions, but make no mistake, they are the enemy. Now, again, saying that the corporations in a fucking cyberpunk game are the bodies isn't exactly a big statement. Um, it just kind of feels very... It feels like a very pointless statement to put in. And frankly, it just kind of makes them look giga cringe by putting that goal in. If I'll be honest with you, it's kind of gay. Not going to lie. It's, it's actually just really... It's just mega soy put that in as like oh we, we encourage you to break every single goal in this book except this one you know <clears throat> again it's very yeah exactly how believe that's the issue it's like how oh my god like come on catch a grip yourself you know what i mean again this is where people say 
I'm gonna bring it, bring it back up. I'm gonna show you guys again. Oh, this is a heavy, a dim metal album of a game. A spiked flail to the face, lulls light, heavy everything else. You know what I mean? It's like, hi, come on. Fucking catch yourself on. Catch yourself on. How fucking, like, exactly, how believe, you know? Um, yeah, corpos are the fuck, are, are the, literally the devil in cyberpunk, you know? That's pretty much uh, that everyone can agree with that the corporations in any cyberpunk setting are the bad guys. But if you want to go on about and play a corpo gooden squad of like absolute death squad, why why not? And why would you bother putting this in? You know, um, that honestly truly stunning and brave. And I I I think a lot of people get too hung up on this sometimes, but it was just such a pointless thing to put in, and it's the one thing that I would honestly say that kind of tarnishes all of these books for me anyway you know what i mean like they kind of just give it that really are we really going to be like this guys is this actually what we're doing you know so yeah that's kind of where i'm going to end it bar that i think this book is pretty cool i don't really want to go too much into it because again i haven't played the game and i feel like this is something that i think will need something like these books when they come out these books honestly that book alone is not what you need you need these books if you were if you're gonna play more work seriously if you want to run a campaign or something sweep work <laughs> oh my god that's great so yeah um Honestly, that kind of put me off. See, when I saw that, the cops, bad. Ugh, you know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Like, how? Oh, my God. Seriously, is this really what we're, really what they're going to do? You know? Uh, we, we, we're, we're the anti-bad guys. Can't you get that? You know what I mean? Like, if, say if I'm playing Cyborg, why should I not want to play someone like Robocop? You know? what? what and, obvious, and again, Robocop, who's the baddies in Robocop? The corporations are the baddies in Lubricop, so, like, come on. But are you not going to be able to play Lubricop? Come on, you know. Um, but, again, you could argue that, yeah, Lubricop is a product of the... He's a he's a victim of the capitalist system. Um, yeah, he, he did get killed at his job, but you're still coming into work tomorrow, man. <laughs> you know? Um, I think you know what I mean. So, like, honestly, it's a pretty cool book. I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I think I could definitely pick this up and I could DM it easily. Um, and again, I'm a bit of a retard when it comes to, like, DMing. Um, but I think this is pretty, a very easy system. I think this is honestly... I don't know if I would say... Okay, like, you know, when it comes to, like, Cyberpunk Red, I think Cyberpunk Red is pretty easy to pick up and play with the 2Z10 system. Um, but I'm more accustomed to the D20, personally. So I think something like this I would have an easier time with. But I would still implement rules because, again, it is a very... Like, this is one of the other things, right? I'll show you guys this. This is... So they still haven't bothered to put in a fucking um, thingy system. Like a damage... Uh, not a damage, but um, a um, a um, size, let's call it. Or, like, space. Like, how, how, how far does a weapon shit? You know what I mean? Does it have, like, a 100 foot range, 200 foot range? You know? Oh, this is actually really good. I love this. The generators in it. This, that's actually a pretty good generator. It's a jo mission generator. It's, it actually, I, I think it's pretty sweet. Um, I think it works very well. And I've rolled up some pretty good ones. Oh, the monster manual is a lot better in this one than the other one. I'm just putting that out there. I think it is a better monster manual. So there is some regards where this makes it a better foundation than the other one. <clears throat> but, eh, you know... We'll just find out in time. It depends. I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people banging out third-party content. Um, oh, yeah, they have <coughs> updated some rules. They do have some cover rules and mechanics and such. But, like, where is the weapons? If I could find the weapons, that would be great. That's really what I'm looking for here. Um, ba -ba 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 apps. Um, drugs. Ammo. Here we go. So, um, chainsaw teaser shotgun hand grenades this like this this is just a stupid way of doing it i don't care hand grenades d6 damage up to 3d6 targets 
that should be a radius. I don't care. That's just ridiculous. Just make, just just give me like a fifteen foot radius or a ten foot radius or a five foot radius grenade. Not three, not two, one d three targets. You know, come on. I feel like that just makes grenades so much weaker. You know what I mean? I, again, it kind of makes it a bit more abstract, but it's just shit like that where it's like, you know what? You could have just put that in, and you would have been a bit happier. You know what I mean? So. Um, overall, I don't know what I would say about Cyborg because, again, I haven't played the game. And if I haven't played it, I don't really want to put much on it. Um, who is... Who is Morkborg for, though? Who would be interested in this game? Do you enjoy heavy metal album cover artwork? Not exactly heavy metal. I don't think you have to enjoy heavy metal to enjoy this. But do you love the artwork style? And if that's, yeah. Like, you know, honestly, this is the thing. See even the feel of the books. Like, I don't know if you guys can see it there. But it's uh, debossed, so it is. See the feel of these books. They're absolutely a treat. Um, the quote, see the, see the the price of this book. I think it's like £35. It's so cheap. I don't think the guys that make, make this are making any money. If I be honest with you. For how much they're selling it for. It's it's so cheap. Yeah, honestly, I don't know if I I don't know if I'd recommend Cyborg to many people. Um, I th I kind of think the setting is kind of interesting, but again, Cyberpunk's already such a great system, or it's such a great setting and a great system anyway. I think you'd be better off just playing Cyberpunk instead of Cyborg. Um, whereas I do really like Workborg, you know. Um, let's see. It's a very pretty, but don't know that I can give it any merit beyond that. Well, you see, that's the thing. I think I think you would really need to judge it with these other books involved. And I think if you look, if you were... And again, this is the other big problem is a lot of people that have read, uh, have read Morkborg only read the PDFs. And honestly, it's not the type of... It's just not the type of book I think you could sit and read these as PDFs. They need to be really experienced because some, some of the pages you have to like flip upside down to be able to read. It's kind of like weird. I don't know. There's something about it. I think it's pretty cool. I really like it. But again, you would really need to actually physically have it in your hand and read it. It's more of an experience, you know? Uh, yeah, honestly, this, the mission generator is actually really good in this. Actually, that's, that's one thing I'll give this book. See the mission generator? Uh, I'm definitely going to add mission generators to all my games in this, like, style. Because it just works. I should actually, we should probably actually roll up a mission right here. So anyway, like, let's go for this. Mission generator. And um, Patron, who's doing it? A politician, megacorp, ambition startup, money launderer, an arms dealer, a strange cult, a uh, secret society, a street gang, the CEO of a major corporation. The contract, what is it? Um, You know, mashup VAP, port smuggling, mobster, you know, gang guns, previous patron, you know, all that type of stuff. And then, like, you know, let's move on to the next one. So we've got who it's from. What's the promise? You know, and you've got your how much you can get from it. Um, vehicle, usable gear, and then, like, tables for money. Um, then you've got the job itself. If the job is if they sabotage, escort, steal, deliver, threaten, kidnap. This is actually, honestly, this is a really good table. I really like them. And then the target, a shipment of illegal goods. So let's go with, um, you know what I mean? You can just, I, I think it's pretty good. I, I think this is actually a really good one. And then the location, corp office, dive bar, nightclub, uh, luxury residence, hideout, moving vehicle, drug den. You know, I think I think it's pretty good. I think it's uh, what type of security and then feature locations. Honestly, I think it's actually, that's probably the best part. Um, corp generator. Eh, I don't really think you need that, if I'll be honest with you, because what's the whole point of, like, mega corporations kind of, you kind of want to have goods of them, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Like, you know, they should all be, like, one shadow organization or, like, umbrella corporation, you know what I mean? Um, and again, that's just a mission at the back, but I haven't played it, so I don't really want to speak on it. But that is one thing that is good in that book, so I would recommend that just from that part. But again, uh, it's about a £40 book, so I don't know if I could recommend it. It's a very pretty book. Um, it looks really nice. It's really, it's tanky as sin. Like, you should feel this. Um, it's got seen. If you look really closely, I don't have a, 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 a black light, but it's covered in, um, like, 
secret messages the whole way through the book. It's actually really cool, where you have to look at it through a black light, and you can see all these like hidden fonts and stuff, and hidden messages. And it's, it's honestly, it's quite an experience. That's something I think is really cool. Um, Hyperborea. I don't know. I've heard a lot of mixed stuff about Hyperborea. If I be honest with you, a lot of people love it. I th the one thing that I've turned that's put me off Hyperborea is a lot of people say just how goals dense it is. A lot of people do say that, and I've looked at it, and eh, it I think it looks a bit too... It, it looks like it's hard to get jump into. And again, this is what I think what really helps Morkborg is its easiness to jump in and just play. Um, Wasn't there a Conan system? I couldn't tell you, honestly. Um, I haven't looked at it. I got the PDF. It's not a need to... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I really like, I think, honestly, I would really recommend picking up copies and actually, like, reading them. But again, I think you're going to know yourself whether or not this is something that you're interested in. For me, I think Morkborg has had an overwhelming positive effect on my role plan. It's got me way more, it's got me DMing. It's got me thinking about how actual goals are made and how they work and experimenting with different people. I really like that. <clears throat> that's not going to be for everyone, though. Um, so, you know, that's a thing. And there is a ton of great third-party content out there. But it's a mixed bag. There's some stuff that's amazing and other stuff that's dog shit. Like, um, let me see. What would be my favorite third-party content? Honestly, play this book. That book's really good. But, um, honestly, maybe Pirate Bird. Um, this here one, actually. I really like this. Um... Bird and Crypt, and that's a really good one as well. Word of Chains, honestly, they're both great. The only one out of all the books that I've got that I regret buying would really be this one. Um, that this here one here is sk uh, Skin Job or whatever you call it. Um, I think that would be the only Morkberg book that I was kind of disappointed with, you know. Um, the print quality is very good. It's very pretty. But again, I feel like it suffers from the old style new substance. You know? Um, yeah, it did. It, it did really activate my, <laughs> my neurons. Yeah. Um, but again, so look, that's, all, that's all I really wanted to say. I think um, I've been talking so much about Morkborg in videos, but I've never actually had a chance to sit down and really explain what it is that I like about the game to a lot of people. And honestly, I, I just think it's fun. I think it's smooth. I think it's easy. I think it's really easy for people to just pick up, play, and have fun with. It's um, And if you can look past the SJW um, creators, you know, then that's all you really need. Um, and again, there's only really two things. And again, I'll just get them up just to show you guys. So, boom, 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 boom. The make it dark, depressing, weird, and cruel, but let everyone partake in the suffering. Be sure to avoid sexist, racist, homophobic, or transphobic tropes and themes in your content. There's plenty of that crap in the real world. So, I don't know. Uh, it, it is in the third-party license, so I'm going to call that a morality clause. And then, again, they also did that with Cyborg. Um, are these kind of blown out of proportion? Kind of. But at the same time, I think it's the only times I've felt like the creators have been very outward in their worldview, you know? And I think they've really kept it in and they've really tried to focus on making a fun game instead. Now, fun is, of course, subjective. And, of course, if you've sat this long through me ranting about Cyborg, you know, or Morkborg, then, you know, that's up to you, you know? Um, I feel that have oppression but not specific oppression <laughs> yeah 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 pretty much pretty much so look i think i think that's where i'm going to end on it today um any of you guys like, any questions anything you guys want to know here let me see where is ozzy ozzy's sleeping so he is um b -b 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 Check box. Whoops. yeah sl sleepy babies he's fast asleep so he is so that's handy, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, um, I think that's really where I'm going to end because I don't really know what else. Uh, where do you get these books? Well, um, Free League Press does a lot of them. Um, most of these books are Kickstarter books. Like, that's a Kickstarter book. That's a Kickstarter book. That's a Kickstarter book. 
Um, that is off drive through, so it is. Um, um, what, what other, that there I bought off a web store. I couldn't tell you what web store it was, though. Um, you kind of just have to look about online. You can find pretty much all their content, though. See if you go back. See if I go on to this. Um, so, again, categories. Tills. See, the, there's so much stuff here. Gears, glasses, goals. These are, the, like, this is all optional stuff. But there's so much to work on that I, I don't even think people can say anymore that Morkboard is all style, no substance, whenever there's so much of it. You know what I mean? There's an absolute ungodly amount of optional goals that, <clears throat> you know, again, you can really fit into whatever you want. So, dying cards, Armageddon, like, you know what I mean? I'll just go, I'll just slide down this. Like, we're still on B. This is all documents of just optional goals. I'm going to keep going down this because I'm kind of sick of people being like, oh, it's all style, new substance, whenever they haven't even looked at. Look, I'm, I'm on N. Like, let's just keep going, guys. You know? Um, yes, it has, actually. Yeah. Um, there we go. I'm down to the bottom. Um, I've actually been sending a ton of stuff in the post. I've been flat out. Um, we've got a... Oh, 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 Snake did. I sent your... I sent your copy today, so I did. I know your one was in... Um, your your copy is in the post, so it is. It went in the post. <clears throat> today or yesterday. I'm not sure exactly when Heather put it in. Um, but your copy is common sneak dude, so there you go. Um, sorry, I don't know anyone else's names in the chat, so <laughs> I don't know if your one was it was in the bag that it got sent today. So you know, there you go, there you guys go. Just just so you know. So um, hopefully we'll get all the books out. But honestly, oh my god, the signing process is taking a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, there's a lot to be signed. But honestly, we're having fun with it, so it doesn't really matter too much. So yeah, look, that's all the optional goals, which as you can see are huge documents that go on for absolutely ever. And um, we've got classes, which are tons of. We've got monsters and NPCs, which again, tons of. You know, it just keeps going and going and going. Look, like, I'm still only on B for God's sake. Um, so there's so much of this that you can literally get and you can just fuck about with. Um, monsters, decor, um, adventures. Let's see, what's under adventures, you know? So if you're interested, a lot of these are PDFs, a lot of them are free, some of it's paid for, you know, aboard the shackle, <laughs> aboard the shackle, <laughs> dead god stronghold, um, again, the quality can be all over the place in a lot of these, um, that's a big SJW one, I know that one is anyway, let's get on to this, um, it's on drive through. It was, um, it was, uh, I remember this at the time. This is where they got a lot of problems from. Um, I'm not really going to bother getting into it, but I remember. I think they give all the proceeds to it for, like, a BLM thingy. But, like, you know, if they want to do that, that's up to them. You know, I'm not really going to be like, no, you can't donate money to whoever, you know. I kind of, the problem with the capitalist worldview is, like, you know, eh, you guys get it. You know what I mean? So, look. Like, it's up to you, you know, if uh, if this sounds like anything that you guys are interested in, I would say go for it. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. Um, this has got nothing... To, this is honestly... And this is the thing. This is why I feel like I want to talk about it because I feel like um, I bring it up and a lot of people are like, oh, but what about this? But I kind of wanted to just address that and explain to you guys my views on it, you know? So that's kind of where I fall, <laughs> you know? Um, but anyway, look, I suppose I will have to love yous and leave yous. Um, the post... Oh, you know what? Actually, I'll, I'll go ahead. You know what I mean? I'll, um, let me just do this here. So I'll show you guys what some of the post is like. So let me, let me move this chair out of the way. Hold on. Um, and, I'll, and I'll go ahead and I'll bring in some, some of the bags that are... Um, I'll bring in one of the bags just to show you guys the size of these. Alright. All right. All right, hold on, let me just flip some of the some of the names on these so I'm not like, doxing people, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna 
turn that around. So, uh, oh, I'm going to turn the, turn the bag on so you guys can see. Uh, oh, God's sake. Yeah, so there, this here is our, that's an Ikea bag full of post. Uh, I did this up. <laughs> and we've got, at the minute, <laughs> just to show you guys how many there is, that's just one bag. We've got five other bags. All these need to be signed, just to give you guys an idea. We've got five bags full. These have all got people's addresses on them, so they do. So they're like semi-packed, and they've got what people want written on them, but they all need to be signed. <laughs> and uh, we're doing like a bag a night at the minute, which, is, eh, which isn't bad, you know what I mean? So we're definitely getting somewhere with it all. So I just wanted to show you guys that before I left, you know. <laughs> oh dear, Doc's bag. Hey James, sorry if I missed it, but any thoughts on the lamentation system? Uh, I, I do like, so I really love their modules. I think their modules are really good. I honestly think Death Frost Doom, I think it's the best pre-made adventure there is, if I be honest with you. Um, I really love Death Frost Doom. However, you need to kind of... The only thing that doesn't make it perfect is its mean-spurred TPKs. See, if you just got rid of the mean-spurred TPKs, I think it would be a perfect one. Um, I know it's a bit too edgy for a lot of people, and yeah, it kind of is. But I think, you know, when it comes to pre adventures, it's really up to you on how edgy you want to make it or how, what you want to go with it. For the system, I think it's a decent enough BX clone. It does some interesting things with the fighter, give, being the only class that does extra, extra, um, extra hits. Um, I think the rogue is actually quite good, or the specialist as they call it, instead of a thief or whatever. Um, overall, I think it's a decent enough system. However, I think for most people. I honestly don't think many people actually play the Lamentation system all that much. I think most people just play Dungeon Crawl Classic or e ESO and use the Lamentation adventures. And honestly, their adventures are really, really good, you know, on average. It depends. Some people really don't like them. Some of them can be kind of shit. There is some adventures that Lamentations have done which are kind of bad. But I think the ones that are good are really fucking good. And the ones that are shit are really fucking shit. Does that make sense? You know, so that that would be my view. I I personally, I uh, I'm personally a fan of Lamentations. Um, I think they've got a bit of a bad rap, but that's because they've got mixed up with a lot of weird people. Like James Laji, I think he's a cool guy for the most part, but um, yeah, I don't really get the whole thing about stalking his ex or whatever. I really don't get that. It's kind of weird. Um, it's kind, of, it's really weird. If I be honest with you, and then um, honestly, see when it comes to the little Zach Smith stuff, I don't even know what to think about it. I think Zach got, I think Zach, the problem with Zach was he. Hold on, sorry, my phone's going. Uh, Megan's ringing me. I'll just ring her back. So I will. <laughs> um, so the big problem with Zach is he gets wrapped up in a lot of stuff. He got cancelled. I kind of feel bad for him. Um, I would, yeah, I would definitely, I, I think you could use Cyborg for a Shadowrun game, honestly. Um, yeah, I think you could. I think Cyborg would be a, I, I, I yeah, honestly, the, you know, the thing is, I definitely believe Cyborg is a better system than Sh Shadowrun is, just putting that out there. Um, I, I'm really tempted to look at Varge. I think I should, because so many people have asked about looking at Varge. Uh, and he's such a controversial figure. The only thing that puts me off the whole thing with Varge is, is so he tried to he, he said no this is the definitive edition. This is the this is the this is the game. This is exactly what I want. This is exactly what it is. And then a year and a half later he ends up updating updating the book and doing like a second edition, you know, so no, I'm not doing Thirst of Sword Lesbians. I don't care. Um, I want to do stuff that maybe if the creators, I think, are a bit interesting or people have got... Like, first of all, like, when it comes to me and Varge, I, I think Varge is funny. It's like the definition of big street art, if I'll be honest with you. Some of his old pagan views are a bit, uh, a bit out there and, like... Oh, I think he makes most... Like, the problem is 90% of pagans are kind of cringe most of the time. But I do buy into some aspects of paganism. You know, there's some stuff that actually I think is really interesting. But, um... 
you know, I don't know, Verge is just an interesting guy, and I do want to actually sit down and read it and look at it and see if it's actually decent or not. And that's kind of what I did with um, with Morkborg, because a lot of people put me said to me, no, it's SJW Clash, don't bother, it's absolutely shit. And I was like, you know what, it's kind of caught my eye, I'm going to pick up the book anyway. And I picked this up, and I was like, oh, this is actually, you know what, actually, yeah, you know what. Uh, and then I ended up buying these two books, and I ran a go of games, and me and the boys really enjoyed it. So that's all I've really got to say on the matter, you know. Um, yeah, honestly, um, Shadowgun's just fucking up. I, I don't know what they did with Shadowgun. Like, it's so, it's so fucked. It's just a really bad system. I don't know how they fucked it up so badly, if I'll be honest with you. It's actually comical, like, how bad it is. Um, I don't know how I, I, a game that's so, as, as big as Shadowgun... I, I would say Shadowgun's... At one point, I would say it was... Uh, as popular as Call of Cthulhu. Maybe not as popular as Call of Cthulhu, but it's pretty popular. You know what I mean? You couldn't deny it was big, you know? So, and no one plays it now, but people still enjoy the setting, you know? So, eh, <laughs> that's the thing. But, like, I think that's where I'm going to love yous and leave yous. Um, I think I'm going to do Varge next. I probably will, but I need to actually buy the book. I've got some other books sitting there. There is one book that I really want to review, which is Tars 2. Um, I am kind of friendly with the author, though, so I'm going to put that out there before I start. And the review, also, it's a Lamentations adventure, and it's kind of it's kind of fucked up, not going to lie. It's honestly, if you enjoy the band Gore, then you'll love it. If you don't enjoy the band, again, it's, uh, again, I'm sorry, more heavy metal stuff, you know what I mean? What is it with role-playing games and heavy metal that uh, seems to just go hand in hand? Uh, it seems to be the, the music of choice for Glognards, you know? So, that's a thing anyway. Um, what is it? Shit, I missed it. Someone tell me the TLDR. Well, the, the thing is going to be up anyway, so, like, you know, if you guys are interested, you guys can just watch. I'm not, I couldn't be arsed editing this as a video, you know what I mean? But, uh, overall, I like Morkborg. I think it's worth checking out, and, uh, you know, uh, James likes it and learns from an SJW's notions are trash, but feel separate from the art. Pretty much, yeah. That's, that's my view on the matter, and I really want to, I, I feel like the way the culture war is going, everything is so intertwined. I think it's really important for... Uh, Americans don't really get this, I think. Um, you know, for me, I'm too young to really remember most of it. But I was alive during it, you know, and I remember what it was like as a child. And, you know, you don't, you guys don't want civil war. That's all I'm going to say. Um, it's not good. It's not good for everyone involved. Now, of course, um, even by the time I was, like, five, it was really winding down. And what, what age was I? I would have been about seven whenever the Good Friday Agreement was signed. So, you know, I don't know. I, th I, think, I think we really need to step back from the brink, you know? I think, um, I, I, I think that's where a lot of the world is heading. And I would really, I would much rather try and work with people and accept some forms of artwork that they create rather than now of course that's not going to stop them but i think like you know what what's the harm in you know trying at least you know what i mean i think it's something that i just oh i think we're so fucked for the future it's not even funny i really worry about how far this is going to go and i don't think people are going to realize the path that we're on because the path that we're on is so bad and I don't think people want. They they don't realize what's what's going to become of it. Like, I really did think the whole twenty twenty riots. I thought that whole summer was just gonna cascade. You know what I mean? I thought it was just gonna explode and keep going. You know, and that's kind of what it felt like. But uh, it did. It cooled off, which is kind of amazing. And again, like you know, I I brought this up earlier. Um, uh, no, you're harming society. You know, look, man. All I'm saying is, be careful, you know, because we're in we're in for a tough time, and um, it's not controversial for me saying this type of stuff because I think where I live, people are no. There's not many SJW people knocking about. Hold on, let me just set this up. I'm gonna set this up. I'll I'll, 
I'll leave the books just sitting like that, so I will share it on the table just so there's a bit of something to look at, you know what I mean? But I don't know, I'm really worried about the future, you know? I do think it's something that is going to reach a boiling point, and I think it's only a matter of time before this really gets out of control, you know? And um, again, I'm. I feel like a lot of people are automatically now. This is the thing. Like you know, yeah, it was SJWs that created this. Um, they are straight up Antifa types, and of course, I would be, um, from my worldview, I would be completely opposed to that. I consider uh, Antifa, it's like you know, pretty much one some of the worst people you can imagine. But um, if they created something, I was like, you know what, I'll give them a go. And um, I actually enjoy it. Take your meds. Oh no, not my meds. Well, look here, you guys will, you guys will find out. You know why, sir? See anyone that swears is like a thingy blocker on this. Uh, but you know I'm okay with it. I I think like you know. I'm worried. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm worried about the future, and uh, this isn't like me being like, "Oh, you have to, you have to embrace SJWs. You have to do this. You have to do that." Far from it. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm, if I'm willing to, you know what, take a chance and look at something from people that normally would be um, not my cup of tea what's the harm you know what i mean and i i was able to be like you know what actually what they made was actually pretty cool i actually quite enjoyed it was it the, is it the best system ever no it's far from it have i had a lot of fun playing it yes and that's that's kind of what all i want to say um i've had fun playing workborg and there's a reason why i bring it up in videos from time to time because i have fun playing it um i've had a lot more fun playing it than 5e so if you're one of those people that only play 5e or are looking for other systems i would highly recommend it if you're already playing something like dungeon cold classic if you're already playing lamentations if you're already playing eso or savage worlds or cyberpunk or anything else then you know what i i would say you're fine you know but i think for some people this is something worth checking out but it's not for everyone you know uh right so you can help Give a better future. Well, yeah, that's what I worry about. Well, like, let's have him sleep there now. Let's see, is he, how's he getting along? Bobby's fast asleep. Fast asleep. Can I get that? Or is it going to work? I don't know. Fast asleep. Oh, no, it's not going to work. That's because it's got the night vision thing on. But, you know, that's, uh, like, I think your yeah, priorities in your worldview does change a bit whenever you've got kids, you know what I mean? And I'm kind of just worried about how the world's going. And I would love, you know what, I, um, I've yet... I've yet to meet an SJW that has uh, pretty much every SJW I've ever came across has automatically been like, oh, they're they're this, they're this, they're 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 racist, they're evil, they're Nazis, are high. you know all that type of stuff. Even though like you know, but it's like, come on, you know what I mean? Wise up. Um, if I like you know I I I'm I'm willing, so why why can't they? Now they're probably not never going to do that, and that's why I want to do this. I want to look at. Um, controversial or um, controversial RPG writers that ninety percent of people would not touch with a ten foot pole, as Varge, as Zach Smith, as Venture Satanus, they're the type of people that I'm more interested in, and that's kind of what I want to look at. Do they? Let's forget about them for a second, and let's look at what they're making. You know what I mean? Um, so you know that's kind of where I'm going to end it. I don't think I've got anything else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time.